I do match tennis, which is quite heavy. You know, you play three or four hours in a night. So I work all day and then go straight off to play tennis. Then I, I found that I just couldn't make it all the way through. Um, and it'd go off the court and then it would, it would settle. I did go and see the GP. She said, well, maybe it was performance related. Um, I had a stressful job. Um, I had my daughter's wedding coming up. So I came out of there thinking, it's me. <laughs> I'm anxious, that's why my heart rate's pounding, don't it? It's, it's all up to me. The day before my stroke, I felt a bit strange at work. I just felt really lightheaded. And when I stood up, I felt a bit kind of dizzy. Normally the routine is my husband gets up and does the chickens, walks the dog. <laughs> when he came back, I wasn't up. So he thought there must be something wrong. And he said my breathing wasn't quite right. He thought I must have had a stroke. And I was telling him in my own way that I thought I'd had a stroke, but I couldn't speak, I couldn't walk. Anyway, so got down to the hospital. Um, anyway, but then I just lost my consciousness. And um, the next thing I remember was waking up and my husband was beside me with his tears rolling down his face. But anyway, apparently I had about three, three or four scans um, in that period. So they gave me a low dose of thrombolis to um, thrombolize me. And then I started to wake up. The patient was already known to the consultant cardiologist on call at the time. Um, and he was requested by the stroke team to go and review the patient. The patient um, was reviewed by them the same day that the, the request was made. Um, and they came to the decision after all of the other diagnostic tests that a loop recorder would be um, beneficial. Loop recorders have been around forever, but Link um, kind of gave you a, another avenue, much easier, much more user-friendly, easier to implant. Our Link service is run by our specialist nurses. We have a team of specialist nurses that work in cardiac with the management. Very importantly, we have um, a support line in place that we use for patients, but also for healthcare professionals. This is really useful because, of course, close collaboration with the stroke team is very important. If they have a patient who has already undergone non-invasive uh, ECG monitoring, um, as recommended in NICE guidance, if that patient is suspected with a cryptogenic stroke, and they haven't detected any arrhythmic cause of stroke, then of course they will be then, then considering an implantable cardiac monitor. Somebody's monitoring me at the hospital all the time, even when I travel. Even when I was in Germany for that period of time, I had the box with me and I knew if I had an incident, they would contact me straight away. And it was six weeks after I had my um, stroke that they picked up paroxysmal atrial fibrillation. So, I mean, there's no wonder the cardiac app didn't pick it up. There were concerns that I wasn't going to be able to make it to the wedding, but I did make it to the wedding, which is absolutely fantastic. But long term, it meant that I wasn't able to go back to work because my uh, effect on my eyesight. You know, if they could have done anything differently, it would have been to put the loop recorder in a long time ago. <laughs> and then I wouldn't have, hopefully, wouldn't have had to go through all this that I had gone through. I, I would like that to change, really. I think it, there must be other people out there who's in a similar position to me who could benefit. When you think about it, if we didn't diagnose her with atrial fibrillation and she, she wasn't treated appropriately, and she went on to have another stroke and die, well, that would be obviously terrible for Jeanette and her family. Or if she had a stroke and was severely disabled, it would have cost so much more. For me, it's a no-brainer. You're putting in a piece of technology that's going to pick up her palpitations when she has them. And if it doesn't show atrial fibrillation, then at least you know it's not atrial fibrillation. If it does show atrial fibrillation, then at least you can manage it appropriately and, and hopefully prevent another stroke. It's kind of a, such a big reassurance to me that it's there. You know, I, I would have it till, till I die, really. Because <laughs> it just makes you feel, oh yeah, somebody's got my back. And that's my, my little loop recorder, really. Thank you.